Warning, the show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. This show is produced by Geek Happy Network, constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts. This This is Smorgasbord! Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here is my co-host. Angel. And today we're joined by Kat. Would you want to introduce yourself, Kat? I think our internet just died. Very, it's a good, it's a good very timely. Internet died. We are still recording. Right at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that what I knew it was dying. I saw, it was like I, this. I saw this. your <laughs> I saw your video freeze, and I'm like, I should make yak noises, but I don't know what yaks sound like. Um. They snort. They snort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can. Oh my god. Come on, internet. Are you, are you Why downloading are you do some hardcore yak? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not downloading hardcore yak. What's going Just on? Just softcore. <laughs> I guess we'll start from the top. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's try. <laughs> and today we are joined by Cat. Hey, Cat. Hello. Hey, Kat. Why do you would you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm boring. <laughs> uh, I'm Kat Katrina Salisbury. Is my full name. If you ever want to stalk me, please don't. Um, <laughs> I already do. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's okay, Angel. I know you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a voice actress from Vancouver, Canada. I've also directed one thing but i won't call myself a director because that is literally one thing um, <laughs> it's a very good thing and we should link it it's in a the very, show very notes. good thing yeah. i feel like it's quite timely it mm-hmm. still it really is unfortunately yeah unfortunately um, but it's a light-hearted yeah. take very light-hearted it is it is, or is it now <laughs> it kinda... a documentary oh <laughs> oh boy you should y'all should just go watch it <laughs> yeah is it, is it available online your what we put it online okay. yeah it is available on the youtube the movie is called the chattening the chattening okay we're gonna put it up we'll put the link or something in the description or whatnot amazing yeah um yeah and you can see me as a uber driver yeah. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> oh, yeah. like, you were the uber driver <laughs> I was the Uber driver. I made a cameo. Nice. Very Hitchcock of you. But Kat is also a yak. A yak? I am a yak. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. A yak from a TV show or something. From this little show called My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. I don't know. You may have heard of it. You might have not. It's a big following from what I hear. It's a pretty big yeah. following. Yeah. Well, it's kind of perfectly timed to have you as our guest if you are the yak in My Little Ponies, because today we're talking about yaks. <laughs> this was not oh, planned yeah. or anything. Yeah. No. <laughs> we didn't. It was definitely in our schedule. Now, Kat, Sarah since you are a yak in the show, do you know much about yaks? I know almost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know they have horns. Yeah. They have fur. They have fur. True, true. Um, they look like shaggy I think cows. They do look like big shaggy cows, like <laughs> cow mixed with buffalo, but more cow body and a little goaty, and, a little bit, just a little. You know, a little teeny bit goaty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they all got you know put in a bowl, mixed <laughs> together, and there's a yak. I think you can use their fur to make blankets. Ooh, yak fur blanket. That- mm-hmm. Yet you know blanket. the only That's the one fact I know. <laughs> you know the only yak that I've interacted with not even interact. This is not even real. It's on World of Warcraft. <laughs> a torrent? No, they had yaks oh. in one of the expansions. I don't even what? remember which one you can get a yak mount. Are you serious? No. Yes. 
<laughs> well, now I need to go get. I shouldn't, but I need to go get that expansion. <laughs> I stopped playing in Cataclysm, so it definitely wasn't. I think it might be after there. that. But yeah, there Agent. was. A, I remember there was a whole quest where you go to a yak farm, and you ride a yak around, <laughs> and you do like farm quests. <laughs> Was if it in the mountains? Play World of Warcraft, I should know. It was mountainy looking. And there's one, there's like a quest called the Yak Wash, where you have to like go wash some yaks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought World of Amazing Warcraft was like yeah. fighting things. This sounds like the Sims. Well, it is. <laughs> it's, it's not Sometimes the Sometimes you gotta do some, you gotta do some other stuff for some yeah, other people. You can't always be fighting. That's true. We learned that in Tangled yeah. as well. Well, yeah, so we're talking today about yaks and the bloody truth about them. As we talked about in an earlier episode about blood, we had a, we covered a little bit about blood drinking, about or drinking blood of yaks. Oh, so we figured today God. we're just going to cover a little bit wow. more about it and see where we go. Uh, but before we start, we, why don't we cover a little bit about what's in our palate this week. Angela, you been eating anything much this week? I try to make scotched eggs. Which, if you don't, what are those? if you don't know what it is, you kind of soft boil some eggs, and then you get sausages, and then you take it out of the casing, punch it, make it flat, and then you wrap it around the egg, and then you dip it in panko, and then you can either deep fry it or you can bake it. So you end up with this crispy, crusted, sausagey wrapped egg. It's pretty good. Whoa! Where does the this scotch really come into good. play? I have no idea. I thought when I picked the recipe, I'm like, all right, I'm going to dunk this in some alcohol, right? You bought a bunch of scotch for it and then you didn't even eat it. No. Exactly. I guess you can drink you it can, on the side. Yeah, I guess it's, so. That's oh, the darn. dipping sauce. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. But I How highly recommend it with some hot sauce. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Well, I cooked some croquettes today or yesterday. Ooh. Maria did at least, and she shared those croquettes, <laughs> which also uses panko, but potatoes instead of eggs. Right. Panko's got yeah. such a great texture. It does. Yeah. It does. It can go on anything. Yeah. What's anything that's boring? I have boring? a bag of it just, literally right beside me. You just have a bag of panko. For those Did you see her with a spoon? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I have like a bag of my old, because I moved recently, so I have a bunch of like non-perishable food items I didn't put away yet. So there's a bag beside me and some pangos in there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, we actually can't tell where you're sitting because I mean, you're sitting in Hollywood. So we don't know I'm if you're in like bedroom. in a living room or a kitchen or... <laughs> We don't or know. In a farm of panko crumbs. Oh, uh, yes. Maybe. Panko factory. Ooh. Met Gala. Oh. Hello. Maybe I'm at the Met Gala. <laughs> Where they serve panko, of course. Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> Where did he come from? <laughs> He's just in my room. Oh, oh hey. <laughs> my room. Hi, it's room. Filled, Very it's filled with panko, plain. by the way. Yeah. It's filled it's a panko, with panko and two pictures. <laughs> I had to take down all of my old teenage posters when I came back here oh, no. for the quarantine. I was like, ooh, this um, Eric Northman from True Blood poster should probably <laughs> come down now. Uh, <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> are we? Yeah, so today we're just going to talk a little bit about what yaks are, their importance in certain areas of the world, and then just cover a little bit about the blood drinking festival and how it works. So what exactly are yaks? Well, as you guys mentioned, yaks are animals, <laughs> <laughs> and they belong in the bovine family, which includes animals like bisons, buffaloes, and cows, which probably explains why they look like bisons, buffaloes, and cows, <laughs> and a touch of goat. But with bangs. With bangs. <laughs> yes, bangs. You got little hair. They're, bu they're bisons, or they're buffaloes with bangs, I guess. <laughs> buffaloes with bangs. Bangfaloes. Yeah. Bangfaloes. <laughs> New name. We're not scientists, but we could name animals. Oh, yes. Bangfaloes. <laughs> That's a Latin name. Yeah. <laughs> they're so cute. They are. Yeah, if you've never seen a yak, they look like cows with just a lot of hair, a handlebar horn, and a hump in their back. The hump is actually a fat storage system that helps these animals survive with times with not a lot of food, which is similar to camels. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, oh. They can be black, white, or brown. And unlike bisons and buffaloes who tend to be found in fields or flatlands, they're found in higher elevations, so more in 
um, mountain ranges and all that. So in the thousands of ele- the thousands of meters of elevation rather than flat land. They are actually native to Asia first, specifically in the Himalayan mountains, and believe that they first were domesticated in the little country of Tibet for thousands of years ago. Must have been Pandaria. <laughs> the expansion. <laughs> okay, yes. I didn't play far into Pandaria. It wasn't oh. a very good one. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah. Well, today, though, yaks are found actually all around the world, as people have found many uses for yaks, from transport to food and farming. There are two species of yaks today, wild yaks and domesticated yaks. Ooh. Wild yaks, or their Latin name, boss mutus, which translates to speechless what? cow. And Aww. domestic yaks are They're boss. just introverted. They are. They actually <laughs> don't make a lot of sounds compared to cows that moo and bisons that grunt and stuff. Yaks are <laughs> kind of quiet. <laughs> and domestic yaks are called boss grunines, which is grunting cow. <laughs> so I guess maybe <laughs> domestic ones make a little bit more sounds. <laughs> <laughs> the wild ones. Yeah. Wild or they're just quiet. They're actually the silent assassins of the boy bovine family. <gasps> what? Yeah. They're so quiet and nimble. I actually don't know. I'm not <laughs> a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> not actual yak facts. Not actual yak facts. <laughs> what an actual yak fact is, though, is wild yaks are larger than domestic yaks. They're almost two meters tall at the shoulder and can weigh about 800 kilos. While domestic yaks weigh way less, from 300 to 500 oh. kilos. So I would not want to mess with one in no. real life. I mean, they're pretty chill. They're like... I'd still be scared. <laughs> with the shaggy hair and the bangs and all that, you give them a joint, they just look like stoners <laughs> chilling in a field. Hippies. Hippies, yeah. And they, they have that spiky little horn yeah, on the side. that's true. <laughs> um, they do have a thick layer of hair. And a thick layer of fat, which makes them more resistant to cold than most of their cousins. And their diet usually involves rice and foliage, so moss, different herbs and stuff. Generally eat the herbs that humans don't tend to eat. Oh, they're vegetarian That's introverts. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And they they just eat other things. Yeah. So everything's getting used. They are. They do. And arguably, when looking into farming uh, information about yaks, they're actually better to raise than cows, potentially, as they eat way less in food than cows do. They're also able to forage food on their own rather than cows, which you kind of have to feed. They're more disease resistant and they are more able to just move around and you kind of just leave them. Like buffaloes and bisons apparently are hard to raise because they need space, while yaks just kind of... You just, just chill. stand there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's adorable. Yeah, they're like I'm the sure. ideal I want pet. A little baby yak. They are, yeah. yeah. They're so cute with the hair and all that, and they just yeah. I think I spent. Do you think there's like miniature yaks? <laughs> I heard those are breed. B- bonsai or yaks? Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, yak meat itself also is low in fat deep crimson in color and tastes sweeter than venison and even more tender than buffalo so it even sounds like a better oh. alternative for meat um oh, while they're they good alive and dead yeah <laughs> <laughs> many uses alive That's and dark dead. <laughs> yeah. um while the yaks Darkest themselves timeline. are pretty endangered right now uh, a big no. part of it is there's not much protection for them and they tend to interbreed with domestic cattle so In some ways, the wild yaks are just getting domesticated. Oh, they're making yak cows? Yak cows. Yak cows. Yeah. Yeah, I guess guess if you could interbreed with your cousins twice removed, I don't know how that works. I don't know. That doesn't sound nice. I mean, donkeys donkeys and horses can breed, right? Yeah. That's where mules Uh, are. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't breed a donkey with a donkey? Something about like really? a hybrid? No, I don't know. Huh. I'm not a scientist, <laughs> <laughs> so some there's some combination where they can't reproduce on their own. Oh, maybe male yeah. and male donkey? No, if it's like a male horse and a female donkey, they can make a a mule. Or is it the other way around? Oh. I don't know. I read about this one day in a (laughs) Wikipedia spiral. (laughs) But yeah, I think 
I didn't see anything like that when it comes to yaks and cattle. So maybe they could just mm. yak it up anyway. <laughs> yak it up. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, speaking of yakking up. When yaks get pregnant, apparently they have a tendency to home back into their place of birth. So when oh. nomadic people have herds of yaks, they tend to have someone watching out for pregnant yaks who might steer away from the group and go back home. How do they remember where they were? Fish do, right? Like, was it salmon? Yeah, fish do. Or... do yeah. Something? And yeah. I mean, like, a lot of animals, I don't know if it has to do with smell or anything, but, like, they can venture away and then they can come back. Yeah. And bees, apparently, can, like, they... When they go out to pollinate, bees go three kilometers out and around and then always end up back home. Yeah. So they, I don't know. They have like a homing. Yeah. Pheromone. They have like Pheromone their own radar. GPS devices built yeah. in or something. Memory just yeah. like us. Yeah. I don't even know what it felt like when I gave birth. Uh, dude, I don't know how to get anywhere without Google Maps. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Google Maps. Okay. Another fun yak fact is they're very easily trained. So apparently <gasps> yaks can be trained to even just come back home right away. So one way that nomads would do that apparently is they would have rocks under slingshots and throw it to the direction of the yak to signify that it's time to go back home. Aww, and they learn cute. it pretty quickly. Now, of course, there are yaks are native to Asia, but there are yaks around North America nowadays, a lot of it is coming here for breeding and for farming purposes. There is some movement to try to <laughs> replace cow or beef with the axe um, because of some of the benefits that we mentioned earlier. Interestingly enough, some people find it that the name yak is just kind of disturbing because it's so close to yuck. <laughs> <laughs> what? So there was someone to try to make a motion to call yak meat Himalayan beef instead. That's too many Which syllables. Was denied. Dude. Yeah, yeah, they're just they're yaks. They're yaks. Yeah. This is they're like a colonialism yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> they're it just is. gonna name it. It's like I don't like that name. It sounds foreign. Isn't everything Change like it. that? Yeah. Mm. It's like our first ten episodes. What's the history of this? Oh, colonialism. colonialism. <laughs> oh my god. Oops. But yeah, in some places in the world, like Tibet and Nepal, yaks are held as one of the most important animals, as they are one of the animals that have so much variety when it comes to uses. I think some people like call them almost like boats because they are able to transport things for people. Aside from being able to do that, they're also an animal that has a use for every body part that they have. So like we mentioned, the meat is good. You could use that to eat food or you could use the meat to eat for sustenance and they're also kind of low maintenance untain you can make sausages jerky jelly there's even canned meats down in tibet and nepal that you could have god like, yak spam yak. yeah there might be yak spam <laughs> honestly their hide and hair are also good for creating clothes your their hair is comparable apparently to cashmere Ooh, so I'm there's soft. another move to try to make yak hair kind of cashmere equivalent already their milk is also another great source of nutrients. Their bones are even used for certain medicinal purposes or even calcium supplements. You could even have yak tea or pocha in Tibet. It's black tea mixed with yak butter and milk with some salt. It's actually more soupy than it is tea. Tea? <laughs> tea, yeah. Tea. I would drink tea. that. That sounds yeah. interesting. That sounds interesting. It's pretty strong, apparently, but it sounds good. Milk and butter, though? Milk and butter is delicious. Yeah. I've I've recently learned to appreciate butter. I used to not like butter. You not... didn't appreciate it's... butter? I didn't like it for the longest time. Yeah. Whoa, what? that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I used to... Now, this is probably why I'm going to die at an early age, but I used to eat butter as a child. Me too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's what? Because so, you taste... You taste it, and it's really yummy. Really? I mean, as a as a kid, like when you're five years old, you have no idea. You're just like, this <laughs> is a good thing. I'm gonna put it in yeah. my mouth. <laughs> you're just like, wow, this tastes really good. Yellow so I chocolate. Would, yeah, I'd literally take a fork and just oh eat butter goodness. and eat butter. <laughs> and my parents it. caught me one day and yelled at me and explained to me that it was not it's, good. It's not yellow <laughs> chocolate, cat. <sighs> No, whenever my mom takes That's me when to I learned restaurants, you know how they serve like bread with butter? I just be like, I don't yeah. want the bread. I just want the butter. No, the butter. Really? And yeah. it's whipped. It's whipped butter. It's oh, whipped so butter good. is pretty good. Now, now I wonder what yak butter tastes like. Yeah. I'm interested. We should find it. 
we'll for any of our 10 listeners butter. can you send us some yak butter please <laughs> find us yak butter yeah. now the most surprising part of the yak that i thought would not have a purpose but did was their poop <laughs> What? They found a way to take advantage of yak poop. What? Apparently, Zero you could use waste. their poop as coal to keep your stoves hot. What? So oh, they would wow. just grab the poop nice. and keep it to, yeah, ignite their stoves. That's crazy. Now, there are some environmental concerns about burning shit. Um, <laughs> it does have a lot of carbon. <laughs> yeah. The smell, I didn't read anything about issues with the smell. So well, if you, They're just the vegetarians and it's... Kind of just like burning grass, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we did have that episode about ptarmigan poop, which is snow geese, and how people in Iceland would eat ptarmigan poop at certain t- times. So there are uses for poop. <laughs> I just listened to an audiobook where they reference ptarmigans, and I'm like, I know what that is. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to put that in there. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be like, yeah. what is that word? Whatever. But yeah, so yaks are... are just cold cows. Cold cows, yep. They're the ptarmigans of, cow, of cows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yaks are kind of really very important in Tibet and Nepal. In fact, they're so important in Tibet that they have a rare festival called the Yak Festival. Uh, people <gasps> dress up for it. Yaks are sacrificed to deities. There are even yak races. Um, oh my God. This festival itself is celebrated on the 15th day of the 8th month in the Tibetan calendar. And as we learned about certain calendars, they're all different. This one's actually even different from the lunar calendar we learned before. The Tibetan calendar runs in a loony solar calendar, which is means that, that means. their months are their months are tracked like they're sorry, their months are tracked by the moon, but their year is tracked by the sun. That's like the super oh. simplified version of it. <laughs> huh. I, I don't know how to math that. Am I yeah. I don't I, we're do not gonna I. we're not gonna go into the details of that, but pretty much more or less their years last about as long as we our years, which is the solar years, but just the way they track the months are different. Now they do celebrate the festival itself annually, but the grandness seems to vary from the way I understood what I researched on. It seems like a full celebration with the yak graces and the sacrifices and all that are pretty expensive for the people there so they almost never do that it apparently has only happened once in the past century but some level of celebrating yaks seem to happen every year that's how that's the hot take (laughs) (laughs) but i'm not an archaeologist (laughs) or or a (laughs) calendarologist calendarologist When it comes to Nepal, just like Tibet, yaks are also held in high regard. Um, if people don't know where Nepal and Tibet are, they're right beside each other. Tibet being the north, Nepal being the south of the Himalayan mountains. This could probably explain the similarity of why they value yaks. Because <laughs> that's probably their cows. One notable yak event in Nepal is what we want to cover today is the Blood Drinking Festival. Watch out, Yona. <laughs> She's... She's too popular. They could never. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is Yona the name of the yak? Yeah. In My Little Pony? Yeah. Oh, that's a cool name. Yeah. Yona the Originally, yak. when I went, when I auditioned for her, her name was Yana. And then they switched it. To Yona? On the first episode. To Yona. Yeah. It was Yana. And then when I, when we started recording, it was Yona. Oh. I don't know what the... Switch right there, but I like Yona. Yeah, I like, like Yona too. Some one of the ponies accidentally said Yona, and then they didn't realize. They just went with it. Oh, damn it! Just Maybe, rewrite it. But it was it was changed when I went to record the first episode. So oh, weird. Like in the yeah. script. Yeah, in the script. Yeah, so oh. they were like, okay, it's like you, yeah, they just changed it. Interesting. I like. I like it too. Yeah. yeah. Yona sounds cool. Yona. Yona is a great name, but. We're going to go with Yona. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go with Yona. Now, are you allowed to share what the Yona sounds like? I think so. <laughs> I mean, the show's over, so I oh, can't is get it? fired, right? <laughs> yeah, we oh, stopped. No. Um, we finished at season nine. Oh, wow. I didn't know. That's a lot, lot of seasons. Dang. It's a lot of seasons. How many episodes is I that? Think, um, over 200. <sighs> That's a lot of points. Yeah. That's a so, lot of yak. <laughs> I think 200 and something, because I think the 200th episode was in the ninth season, if I'm correct. Oh, wow. 
Um, I didn't do nine seasons. I only did two seasons. Oh. But the ponies had been around right. for nine yes. seasons. Uh, oh, got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. But wait, yaks oh. aren't horses, though. So how does no. how does the yak get involved with a bunch of little ponies? Exchange students. The ponies, yes. The ponies opened up a school of friendship <laughs> and invited um, different species from all around Equestria. So oh. the yaks came and the dragons came and changelings came oh, wow. and griffins came. And everybody came and learned how to become um. closer <laughs> allies. Because at first there was tension before. Right. Yeah, yaks thought they were the best. They didn't want to hear anybody else's opinion. Right. But then Yona goes to learn. Right. Better together. It sounds like a very valuable lesson at some point of history. It is. Because yes. friendship maybe is today. magic. <laughs> maybe today. <laughs> yeah. pretty, you know, maybe a few people should go watch a show about friendship is magic yeah. and how you band together. Yeah. To change things. Yeah. But we're not politicians, <laughs> yeah. so what do we know? No, we don't not know. Not at all. What am I talking about? What am I talking I'm talking about a kid's show. Yeah, I'm talking, talking about, about blood yaks. festivals and kids' shows. Yeah. What are we, <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> but yeah, Uh-oh. so like we did Biggest cover mission. the blood episode before and, and talked about the blood drinking festival in Nepal. So we're just going to talk a little bit more about it. It's called the Kun Kune ritual in some places of Nepal, and it literally translates to drinking blood. The possible roots of the blood drinking seem to come from Buddhism. Now, in Nepal itself, majority of people practice Hinduism nowadays there, where Buddhism is really just the second largest religion with 10% of people practicing Buddhism. But it seems like the actual history of Buddhism comes from Nepal, where it says that the found, the finding or the discovery or the creation of Buddhism came somewhere in Nepal rather than India. Um, the reason why it possibly roots from Buddhism, at least the blood drinking ritual, is because it's a firm belief in Buddhism that you can't kill an animal. So potentially a way for people to be able to extract some kind of thing from a yak would be not to kill it, would be just to extract its blood. Cut it a little. <laughs> oh, so they just kind of like siphon some blood out? Yeah. So the way it works oh. is they don't actually kill the yaks when they do the blood drinking festival. No yaks are intentionally killed during the blood drinking right. festival. The blood drinking festival only requires one to consume the blood of an animal and not necessarily kill it. Another possible reason for drinking blood is because it's also believed that there are medicinal properties in the blood because of the way because of the diet of the yaks. Yaks mm-hmm. tend to eat a lot of herbs and one possible way to receive the medicinal properties of these herbs is by potentially consuming the blood. The roots of the festival itself though come from Tibet in Mustang, North Nepal when it was discovered though or when the ritual was founded it was still part of the tibetan kingdom so as we all probably want to know how exactly does this blood drinking festival work well it's it's actually pretty straightforward it's just a bunch of people hanging out and drinking blood (laughs) (laughs) there are no yak races in this one there are no um Uh ritual sacrifices to some god it's just you know your typical week chilling a little Um, a lot of little blood yeah Generally, people would just climb the mountains to visit people with the axe to drink the blood. Most of the people who come will tend to have chronic diseases who would come up in hopes to have a cure for something that medicine medicine cannot. Or some other people will come up with different ailments as well. Gastritis seems to be a very common reason to come up to drink blood. I don't know if blood actually cures gastritis, but that's one reason. So people would come up... Placebo. Placebo blood. It probably might be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. But yeah, especially with people with chronic diseases, I'm sure it just helps mentally, if not action in physical form. Yeah. Uh, so people would come up. It seems to be more of just like a chill time. People seem to just come up, play cards, eat food. It seems like it's more of a vacation from everyday life more than anything. With a little bit of blood. And get Friendship away. is magic. <laughs> yeah. If magic is blood. <laughs> oh my God. Well, you know, it's a little sipping on a. Blood and juice. Yeah. Us. Whoa. <laughs> and some red tea there. Yeah. Yum. Now, how exactly do they drain this blood? Because I'm sure that's a big question. We're all I trying am to wonder. curious. There so the blood is actually drained very carefully by slitting the throat of a yak. 
that sounds like the- <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a murderous time. It does, yeah. right? But I mean, that's that is the easiest way to get blood drained. It's more. I don't think it's it's not like a slitting that you typically see in movies. It's more of I guess puncturing a hole in the neck kind of idea. Mm. Too small a cut obviously won't let you drain. Too big might make them actually overbleed to death. So the cuts themselves are made by professionals, which seem to be called amji, a a m j i, and not. And every yak is kind of a- capable of being harvested for their blood. Actually, any yak over the age of two, except for lactating female yaks. A cup of yak blood itself costs about a dollar Canadian, and each yak can give anywhere between 20 to 40 cups of blood. The way to consume it is you want to consume the blood fresh and hot before it freezes over, because we are in the high mountains of the Himalayas, so it can get cold. (laughs) Are these domestic yaks, or are these the wild yaks? These are most likely domestic yaks. Hmm. Um, I'm like, how would they get close to the wild yaks? Yeah, because a lot of the people (laughs) up there, I think, are pretty nomadic, and they have their own collection of yaks. Mm. So they usually come up to this nomadic family or village or whatever. Mm. Now, I don't know if you could get blood yak blood ice cream. I mean, I guess if you just don't drink it and it freezes over, then there you go. (laughs) An icy... Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, maybe mix some yak butter or sure. something. I don't know. And sure. I guess to no surprise, you could also buy yak poo as some people <laughs> use it to heal wounds. I don't know if it actually oh. heals wounds, but people do buy it to heal wounds. Friendship is magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tagline for anything. I guess you'd now. use it as yeah. like a paste? I guess so, I yeah. Suppose. I suppose. Mean, paste in a like oven. A salve. Yeah. Yeah, True. yeah. I mean, Interesting. The herbs and medicinal properties probably transfer mm. to the poo as well. So mm-hmm. maybe they could make essential oils out of it too. Who knows? <laughs> so it to the Karens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, while you're not allowed to kill a yak, if a yak happens to die, then you could harvest and eat it. This is part of the Buddhist belief that you're not allowed to kill a yak, or you're not allowed to kill an animal, but. If there happens to be a dead animal, you could eat it. There's nothing against eating animals in most Buddhist practices. Meat is also rare in Nepalese diet. Apparently, it tends to have a diet that revolves around rice, lentils, and vegetables. And yeah, overbleeding does happen, if you were wondering. So sometimes there are mistakes that happen, and a yak can overbleed and die. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in the last, in our blood episode, we kind of covered a little bit of this. But yeah, so overbleeding does happen. Um, and when the ha- yak happens to die, then people can eat. I know in the last episode, we joked around a little bit about it, where it's debatable whether they accidentally let the yak overbleed or not, sometimes because of the rarity of meat in mm-hmm. Nepalese food. So mm-hmm. who knows? There's also some concerns about draining too much in the yak, because they might also start feeling, I don't know, lightheaded and might have a hard time climbing a mountain <laughs> and fall. <laughs> oh. So yeah, Horrible. this whole festival does come with some controversy. Mm. And a big part of it is obviously when it comes to harming an animal. Um, there are two stances in this. There's There seem to be two sides to this, where some believe that the yaks aren't actually harmed when they get their blood drained and it's not hurt. The arguments for it tend to say that you don't really see much reactions from the yak. So they seem fine. <laughs> but many also believe that it does harm the animal itself. I mean, blood loss is a real thing for anybody that lives through blood so you know i'll leave it to y'all to have your own opinions on that one (laughs) i prefer to not drink yak blood Uh, yeah i probably i don't know maybe i'm a little bit biased i feel connection to that (laughs) um (laughs) but i wonder yeah i mean like if most are okay then yeah. Just I mean, a little. I mean, how is it different than us eating meat in North America, really? Yeah. Other than we, like, mass kill them. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Let's stick them in a pen that has no sunlight forever and eat them. So I don't really, like. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be more inclined to drink the blood of a yak if they actually killed a yak for consumption? I am. I think I just don't like the idea of drinking I, blood. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm one of those people that likes their steak well done. Oh. Me too. So, <laughs> I don't know if I would. Uh, uh, do we have the same palate? We blood. like eating butter and we, we like do. well done steak. We like veggie straws. Oh yeah. <laughs> but pineapple on pizza? No. Nope. Well done steak? 
not sure about yak blood. I just I'm don't. so glad yeah. somebody else here likes well done steak because I've gotten so much shit for it. So much shit for it. Yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> Everyone, no, shut no. up. <laughs> we like our steak the well opposite. done. Leave us alone. Like I've like my. Oh, I, have fact, had... I will burn it a little bit. Hmm. I did go and have one really, 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 really well done. Um, not well done. Like it was a rare steak that was well done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know I, mean? I feel like oh, yeah. we have to get you And to... it was melted in my mouth. Like I was like, whoa. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Angel, we'll get we'll give you a good steak. Cause like usually... I did have to go to Wisconsin to get it. But... Oh, that's a little far. <laughs> um, it was good. Yeah, I don't know if I could go good. to Wisconsin. At this the point, the so. amount of cheese I'm gonna consume if I ever go to Wisconsin would be really scary. <laughs> really, <laughs> good really good cheese. Really good cheese. The cheese curds, fresh mm. cheese curds. Oh, I just ate a bag of them. Now do they have yak curds there too? There was a, <laughs> so much cheese. Too much cheese. Oh. I would try yak cheese for sure. Yeah. Same. It sounds good. I mean, yeah. if they could drink it with tea, like. At least the butter. Yeah, is it like, so. is it like creamy? I think I so, apparently, yeah. It's very thick, the tea. That sounds thick. The, the, oh, sounds the good. Tea. Yeah, I the tea try, itself I is pretty I want to try thick. that. I don't know if I can handle blood, just yeah. because, like, I don't. Blood, <laughs> like you've we've all Not tasted a blood. Yeah. yeah. I just don't. I don't like I that did, taste. The, the taste, like, it's like very irony. Yeah. But maybe that's. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's very sweet because of all the herbs. Maybe. Who knows? But yeah, as we as we do with every episode, we cover whether it's healthy or is it good. When it comes to healthy, I don't know. We covered blood before. Genuinely said we had concerns about blood back then. I think it's the same today. There's a lot of iron in blood, so I'm assuming yak blood has a lot of iron as well. So mm. that's not typically super good for you. There's it's okay, concerns. I'm anemic. It's Fine. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you need it then. Yeah. Just chug a that yakka blood. Get it. No, go, go. no iron pills for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. full of yak. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's also concerns about yaks who may have TB, so consuming fresh oh, blood can Oh, boy. Give you, no. you know what? Never mind. Deciding against that. <laughs> so I think it's a pass for me. <laughs> yeah. That's a pass for me, too. There's some TV around there. I don't think I want to play around with that. Yeah. And whether it comes oh. to whether yak blood is, tastes good, I haven't seen much about it. But again, the reasons for people consuming blood doesn't seem to be for taste anyway. Mm. It seems to be for health and better living. But yak meat sounds delicious. So would try. Bison's pretty good. Yeah. They tend to say this is one of the so best of the bovines. So, Ooh. if you like bison, you might I do like love bison. be love biak. My peasant, biak. my biak. peasant palate has only had cow. So. <laughs> oh my! You know what? You missing out. <laughs> I, if you find bison jerky, mm, it is yes. so good. Do they like, have it at Seven <laughs> Eleven? <laughs> uh, maybe. Angel, we got to you out of not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bison wasn't in Vancouver when I had it. No. Was it Definitely Wisconsin? Out. No, it was in Langley. Oh. oh. Is there bison Gotta in the country? Um, I don't think they're in Langley, but like the stores huh? sell it. They might be closer to Hope. There might be some right. bison out there. I don't actually know where they are. See, we could afford <laughs> that. That that we could put in the show budget. Next time <laughs> I go to, to the store, I will pick some up. Yeah. All right. Know. They're yeah. pretty good. So yeah, that's there's a store around here that has alligator too, but I don't Ooh. want to try that. Alligator is I'm... good. I like alligator. Is it good? Yeah. Chickeny? It's very <sighs> chickeny, actually. It okay. tastes like chicken with the texture of good steak. So Oh. Okay. I'm a fan. Okay. I like it. There's a southern restaurant they down here that me. has a really good alligator bites. Oh. Yeah. Spicy oh, too. Oh, that's right. So. I've had it before and I thought it was just chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely have not had alligator. Or I, ha- I have tried kangaroo before. Ooh, what is kangaroo? I feel like taste? kangaroo would be um, chewy. I didn't. I was yeah. I was scared to try it because they just look like big bunnies. But <laughs> it tasted bunnies. Um, <laughs> really jacked bunnies. <laughs> it's really jacked bunnies that can kill you. Kangaroo rips. Um, <laughs> kangaroos are terrifying. They are. They, like big reds. Like yeah. oh my goodness, they're like six feet tall and just jacked. Yeah. 
like <laughs> one punch and I'm like, I'm dead. Yeah. Those those kangaroos are gonna they'll get me. Yeah. Um it tastes like steak. Oh cool. Texture and taste of steak. Maybe like a little more earthy. Right. Oh. Um the kangaroo I had, like honestly, just tasted like a steak. Oh, cool. My, Maybe it was just a steak. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of wondering. I'm like, was it just that's a steak? Same. That's what <laughs> I was wondering labeled, about my alligator. Like, is it just, just chicken? chicken. Yeah. Am I falling for it? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, as long as it tastes good, I guess. It was good. It was good. Yeah, so that's our episode about yaks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm down for yak meat. That's for, I think everything about the yak, I'm down to try. We're coming for you, Yona. With a... Yeah. Fork and knife. Oh, no, leave her alone. <laughs> leave Yona alone. <laughs> Fine. You she's probably too cute. You know what? She's safe because she's a cartoon. So you can't eat a cartoon yet. <laughs> she's she's too cute yet. to consume. She is yeah. too cute to consume. She's too cute. She's got a little blanket. Oh, is she? I don't actually know what yeah. Yona looks like. She's a brown yak. You want to um, With a little green blanket. On her back. Oh, she is cute. And she's got little braids. We braid her hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they're wrapped up. That's cute. Super, yeah. I remember looking cute. her up. I'm like, oh, she's adorable. <laughs> she's so yeah. cute. Yeah. She's got that little the little pouch on her back. Yeah, she does. <laughs> For her storage. It's yeah. full of secrets. Her hump. Full of secrets. <laughs> That's where she keeps all her anxiety. <laughs> and animal hate. <laughs> Yeah. No, she loves animals now. She's a loyal, loyal yak. She, she, She's learned her lesson. She poops love, not carbon. <laughs> and then people use it as medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Poop of friendship. Okay. We're just we're just gonna do. A, I'm just gonna give Bianca a note to fade cut this conversation to end the episode. That's it. That one that you just had. No. Yeah. <laughs> Bianca, fade cut this. Yeah. This, this is smorgasbord. smorgasbord. Have a ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network or email us at team at geekhappynetwork.com. We'd love to hear from our fellow smorgies. This show is created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn, music by Mick Narciso, and videography by Bianca Goico.